Hello, everybody. How are we doing today? I wanted to do a little something. I was talking to a fellow booktuber YouTuber who goes by the name on here, um, June Bug Films, and I'll leave a link um, down below. And we were talking about um, Edgar Rice Burroughs. A lot of through the dialogue. Um, I was getting really interested in um, going back and taking a look at um, some of his books that I've um, read and all this other stuff. And I kind of wanted to know, um, I guess from a selfish standpoint, what I have done videos on as far as Edgar Rice Burroughs goes. And so I'm like searching... Um, through my videos and I can't find what I'm looking for so then I start like searching keywords and nothing's coming up and I'm like ready to lose my flipping mind because I remember um, doing certain videos about stuff and I was getting really frustrated and um, then it turns out okay when I, like probably my first year or two um, on BookTube, when I would do reviews, I would hardly ever just review a book and I would just do my either weekly wrap-ups or my monthly wrap-ups and try to like review everything I read during that time. So I would have a video where I would review like 15 or 16 books and not like put any metadata in the video to tell what the fuck I was looking at. <clears throat> so um, that was weird. And so I'm like, oh shit. Like, do I go back and like put all of these things together and try to like watch all these videos again and try to figure out what I did, where and what. And I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to do new videos on those books and say, this is a review of this book and then go through that whole series. And this is a review of this book and then go through that series and have playlists and make everything easy to find and go through. Um, so if you're one of those people who come to my channel to watch videos about Edgar Rice Burroughs, um, you're in luck. And if you're one of those people who don't like me doing videos on Edgar Rice Burroughs, you're in for a world of hurt, okay? Because I'm going to be um, doing some stuff. And I'm like, okay, well, what should I start with? And my gut was to start with um, the Barsoom books. And then I was looking through my videos on that. And it, on some of those, I actually put like, oh, Chessmen of Mars, you know, or um, what have you. And that was like what the video was about. But then other times I was just doing the reviews of those lumped in with other books. So whatever, we're starting from scratch. Um, and I figured what better way to go than to do the first um, Burroughs series that I fell in love with. And that is Pellucidar, Pellucidar. Um, and the first book there is um, At the Earth's Core. And um, I love this book and I love this cover. And I remember when I'm like, oh, that's Dean the Beautiful about to get attacked by a Mahar in the temple and all this other stuff. And then I was thinking about it and I'm like, you know what? Like, there, there are some things wrong with this picture. First off, the woman who gets attacked by the Mahar in the temple um, is not Dean, and it's another woman. And um, I think she had a child with her. Um, and so I'm like, oh, okay, so there's that. Um, and then in looking at this, you can see, like, you have other Mahars, you know, sitting here. But then up here, you have something that's not a Mahar, which you could only 
guess would be um, one of the Sagoths, who are like the Mahar's slave race kind of thing. And um, there's a better picture on the back right here. Um, but if that's the case, they wouldn't be there either because what the Mahars do in the temple, they don't want anyone to know about, like any humanoid species, because um, what they do is eat people and they find it um, repulsive to let people know that they do that. And the way it's talked about, and I can't remember if in Return of the Mahars they go into it at all, but the way it's talked about is um, where some of the Mahars don't do this. Um, it's like some of them do, some of them don't, but it is frowned upon to um, eat humans. So... Um, so I'm like looking at this and I'm like, Frazetta, you kind of screwed the pooch here a little bit. You're just kind of taking creative license to a whole new level. You're just making shit up for your beautiful, beautiful cover. But God, I love, oh, so amazing. Anyway, so I reread the first two books, um, last week and, um, I just fucking fell in love with the whole series again. And um, there were a lot of things I remembered and a lot of things that I um, didn't remember. But one of the things that's interesting, um, as the series moves, um, and I'm really curious on how I'm going to view these other um, books in the series, because there are some things that really stood out in these first two books. This is just the first one, and I'll do another video for the second book. But um, I think one of the things that endeared me so much to the series as a whole is how each book comes into existence. Okay, like, like why the books are being written in the first place. And I think I will have to talk about that more after I do all the books in the series. Because if I talk about it now, it might not like hit as hard as it would as if we talked about it at the end. So anyway, so this book starts off with um, a mining heir named David Ennis and his um, scientist buddy Abner Perry, who is much older than him. And... Um, Abner Perry made a, um, a giant mole to dig to see how deep the fucking earth is or some, I, I don't, I don't fucking understand why anyone would go, oh, I should definitely do this. <clears throat> so they're like, Hey, let's take it for a spin. You know, what's the worst thing that could fucking happen. Right. And so they go and, um, as soon as they start going, they realize, oh shit, we can't actually turn this thing while it's in solid fucking rock. Um, this is bad news. We're just going to keep going, keep going. And so like all the flat earthers in the fucking world are going, oh my God, you're going to fall out the bottom of the planet and just be lost in space. Um, but that's not what happens here. Okay. Because this is a hollow earth tale. Um, and back in 1914, when this was serialized in All Story magazine, um, most people believed the Earth round. As weird as that is, I know it's very trouble on it. Um, so anyhow, <clears throat> they go, and there's some kind of cool shit with um, the physics on how they realized, like they don't realize it at the time, but they realize it after they end up in Pellucidor, like what happened and when things went awry. Because when they come up, they assume that they like kind of curved back up and came back somewhere else. And they end up on this beach, lucky for them, because if like the tide 
was higher or they were farther in or whatever, they would have been underwater. But um, so they get there and this whole thing is like really um, kind of crazy and like Burroughs is really pushing the idea that these guys are going to die in this fucking metal tomb that is going towards the center of the earth or whatever. And you're like, well, they can't die because this is like chapter one and I still have all this book to read. So what the fuck? But it works out well. And so they find that they're on this place. Now, this is another thing that I love about Pellucidor is that because you're in the center of the world, the sun is the earth's core. Okay. And it is stationary. It does not move. And because everything inside is round, like you're in a bowl, um, no matter where you are in Pellucidor, it's always like noontime, okay? Which is amazing. And that makes everything in this book really weird. And they spend a lot of time in this book, um, and I'm trying to remember if they do it in the subsequent books that follow, where they are spending so much time where the characters are trying to figure out how long something has been, like how much time has passed from this second to this second kind of thing. And um, there's this great bit where um, the, our main character, well, let me, let me talk about that in a second. So, David and Abner Perry, we'll just call him Perry for now on, because that's basically what he's called the rest of the books. Um, they get captured by the, the Sagoths, and the Sagoths have a slave train that they're taking back to the Mahar Temple. Or not the temple, but the Mahar City. And um, one of the things that I love about this is that everyone has these names that are like you meet um, Gak, the hairy one, and Huja, the sly one. And then, of course, our um, heroine in this tale is Dian the Beautiful. And um, I just, I love how everyone has these like names that tell you exactly what type of person this is or whatever. And um, so one of the things about the romance of this story that I really like is that obviously David's going to fall in love with Dean. That's just a no brainer. And this is a Burroughs book. So it's very um, cut and paste how this happens. But the thing I really liked about it is he stood up for this woman's honor and, um, but because he didn't do something, he shamed her. And so now she hates him because he didn't do the thing he was supposed to do. And, um, he doesn't know what the fuck it is. He like has no idea what the fuck anything's going on. And he tries to explain to everyone that he's not from Pellucidor, but they don't understand what the fuck he's talking about because their world is in this little shell and that's all they know. So, um, but what I like about it is it takes like half the book before David will admit that he's in love with Dean and he, needs her and wants her and has to save her and all this other stuff. And, um, the way that's done is actually really good. Um, cause a lot of times you read stories like this and the, um, the romance angle and it is so like, Oh God, here it comes. They're going to fall in love again. And blah, blah, blah. But this, it, it really, really works. And I thought since now I've read so many of Burroughs' books and so many of them have the same kind of idea in it that I was really getting worried that it was going to, like, I was going to come back to this and not like it as much. But I totally still liked it. And that was one of the things I loved about this book when I read it the first time. I was like, wow, like, I really fell for the romance in here. Like, I really 
like was a part of it and was pulling for him the whole time. So they get captured, whatever. Um, and then what I was telling you about the time, there's this bit where David actually escapes the Mahar city because there's some crazy shit that happens and everyone scatters and goes different ways and he manages to escape. And he goes through this thing that like when you're reading it, it seems like maybe days have passed, but when he talks about it, it sounds like months have passed. And when he finally breaks back into the city for the most part to find Perry and like explain what happened, Perry's like, Oh, Hey, what's up? And he's like, dude, what the fuck's your problem? Like, like I haven't seen you in forever. Like, aren't you happy to fucking see me? And he's like, uh, uh, yeah, I just saw you like a second ago and everything was fine. So like, what are you talking about? And so time moves totally differently in Pellucidor, but even between different people. So it kind of goes with this theory that if you exert a lot of energy, <clears throat> Time moves slower because you're exerting all this energy. You need to eat. You need to get your energy back. You need to rest. You need to sleep. And if you're not like overexerting yourself and you're just like being normal at a snail's pace, time goes by really fucking fast, which is like the whole thing is like mind boggling, right? When I'm sitting here thinking, you're like, what the fuck are you talking about? So that whole bit is really cool. And they keep coming back and forth to um, this whole, like, how time works. And since Abner is a scientist, Perry, okay, sorry. Since Perry is a scientist, he um, is constantly talking about what he thinks is happening and all this other shit. Um, okay, so anyway, long story longer. Um <laughs> David has this idea of how they're going to escape, even though he got out pretty fucking easily. So he's going to fucking kill a bunch of Mahars and skin them. And then um, they're going to put their skins on and like walk around and no one's going to know that they're not like Mahars. Okay. It's kind of mind boggling, but it works and they get out the whole fucking thing. Okay, so basically, what ends up happening when they leave, they steal the great secret from the Mahars, and it is how they reproduce, because there's only female Mahars. There's no male Mahars, and the females do this thing out of a book that makes them be able to procreate, and if they don't have that book, their race will fucking die, okay? Okay. So this is when um, you need to have um, either copies of the book or hard drives with the information on it. But this is like back in the Stone Age, right? So like they don't know how to do that yet. So um, lots of action, lots of chaos. Um, it's fucking nuts. But then here is where um, I, that I don't know... This is the thing that dates the book for me. They decide, um, David and Perry decide, that if they could get back to the Earth's crust and bring back a bunch of technology, bring it back to Pellucidor, that they could... Um, take over Pellucidor, control them, and bring them into the modern age. And um, Perry being, this is another thing that's weird, Perry's like a super hardcore scientist, but very, very religious. And he wants to bring them God and um, all this other shit. And it's so fucking, um, like colonialism and imperialism and in fact like he calls it the um the empire pellucidor so it's like what the fuck so that whole shit the whole purpose of everything they're gonna do 
like it makes it not sit right with me at least because like if they would have just said hey like i love dean and i want to be with her forever so i'm gonna go back and get a gun i don't know and um come back down here and teach all these people how to shoot guns i, I don't know the whole thing sounds a bit weird and wonky so um there's a lot of that in it <clears throat> and definitely more so in the next book, which is just simply titled Pellucidor. Um, but there's so many cool, <clears throat> so many cool theories, so much amazing action um, that this book is just fucking great. And the Mahars, I think, are some of the most insane, like, villainous characters that there are like they are fucking terrifying and um i think honestly out of all of the burrow stuff i've read the mahars are the like my favorite foes that um, any of the heroes in any of the books ever face they're just they're terrifying i love them so anyway, um, the book's really good. It's one of my favorites. Um, and next time we will talk about the second book in the series, which is called Pellucidor. Um, but before we go, I need to tell you a little bit about how this book ends. Okay. So David and Perry decide they're going to go back to the Iron Mole and um, go back. But then they are like, look, um, Perry, why don't you stay here and start building up all of the warships for the Empire, and I'll go back and get a bunch of shit and come back, um, and it'll be cool. And then Dean's like, well, you're not going without me, mister. And he's like, all right, fine. And then Hooja, the sly one, fucking puts... A Mahar in the Iron Mole where David thinks um, Dean's going to be. So he gets in and they take off and then he pulls the blanket off of her and it's a fucking Mahar and he can't turn the fucking thing around. And he's like, no. And so they end up in the Sahara Desert. Um, like super far away from everything. And so he's, he's just going to like be chilling with a Mahar until, um, he could find help and, um, get back to the earth's core. Huh? What do you think about that? Does that sound like a good story? So anyway, um, so that's how it ends. And I know I kind of just told you how it ended, but, all of the steps in between here and there are what make the book amazing. And um, I read the first two books in one day. Like, they're really quick reads. Um, they're so fast and fucking punchy and pulpy. Um, you'll love it if you dig that kind of shit. But the world building's excellent. I love, love, love the whole inner world thing. So next time we'll do Pellucidor. If you've read this book, talk about it down below. If you um, have read any other Burroughs stuff you really like, leave it down below. If there's a book of Burroughs that you think I might have done a video on, but you're not sure or you want me to do a video on, leave it in the comments down below. And um, we'll get cracking. So until next time, I'll see you later. Bye-bye.